catastrophe, war zone, unprecedented. These are the words being used to describe the situation in Europe, not to describe any new conflict, but to describe the weather. Now, storms and the accompanying floods have overwhelmed Europe. The torrent dubbed as Flood of Death has affected Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, Austria, Switzerland and Luxembourg. Torrential rains, riverbank bursts, overloaded sewerage systems, submerged houses, overturned vehicles and soaked streets. The scale of devastation shows the worst floods that are faced by Europe in decades. The death toll in Europe has soared to over 180 and most of them from Germany. Where emergency responders are frantically searching for missing people and residents are trying to get their lives back to normalcy. The flash floods, which recently ravaged the western part of the country, have reached southern Germany. The video surfacing on social media shows the torrents of water cascading through a road in uh, Bad Schandau and the latest region to be hit by the record rainfall and the ensuing floods is the border state of Bavaria. The Arch River has swelled, forcing residents to evacuate the district. And uh, houses had to be evacuated because they were at risk of collapse. And there was severe damage caused by the mudslides to the roads and railways. Now roads around the town are impassable with police expected to recover more bodies after the water level recedes. The residents of the southwest town of Erfstadt have rolled up their sleeves to clean up the ravaged neighborhoods. Soldiers and volunteers have reached to help uh, to reinforce the dikes and clean up the damaged areas as entire communities lie in ruins. The river water has swept through towns and villages, forcing tens of thousands of residents to evacuate in the past three days. Now, in the rural southwest district of Arweiler, a big crowd of neighbors, emergency services, and volunteers have picked up shovels, buckets, and brooms. Big crowd of neighbors and emergency services and volunteers are helping the residents to pick up pieces of their homes and businesses. The German government will be dispersing more than $350 million in immediate relief and billions more to fix the collapsed houses, streets, and bridges. According to local media reports, a short-term relief payment of at least 10,000 euros is being considered for small businesses affected by the impact of the floods. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who recently returned from Washington, D.C., has visited the uh, one of the most flood-stricken regions in Germany, the town of Schultz in the district of Arweiler, which has been destroyed. Roads have been washed away and the sanitation system has submerged and communication networks have either been down or unstable. After talking to the neighbors, town administrators and the emergency service workers in Schultz, Merkel has promised swift financial aid. It's terrifying. I would say there is no word in the German language to describe this devastation. However, what I have witnessed and what is incredibly comforting is how people are sticking together, how they're helping each other, the solidarity among people. We stand by your side. The federal government and the state will act together to bring the world back to how it was in this beautiful area, step by step. And that means that we have to act quickly in the short term, but also that recovery will take a long time. Now, torrential floodwaters have torn through the Austrian town of Hallin near Salzburg. The Salzach River has burst its banks after heavy rains on Saturday evening. Now, fortunately, no one has been reported injured, dead or missing, but the raging waters have done a lot of damage. Now, an eyewitness video circulating on social media shows the rushing water dragging a car. And this video is from the Austrian border town of Hallein. Several areas across the country remain on alert. With rains set to continue for 24 hours, the western Tyrol province has reported water levels at a high that has not been seen in three decades. The region around Salzburg has been particularly affected People trapped in their homes had to be evacuated by boats and trucks. The water level had dropped, but the situation in the small towns remains tense due to the possibility of new rainfall. Now, in the Netherlands, thousands of people who were evacuated have started to return home. Although the rain has stopped in the worst affected areas of the Netherlands, the damage 
has made large parts uninhabitable. Now, the rescue workers are digging deeper into the debris left by the receding waters. A survey is being conducted around the southern Dutch cities of Bunde, Bouwames, Bromelin and Gul. Now, the government has declared the flooding state of emergency and uh, has opened up the national funds for those affected. Thousands of residents who have returned to their damaged houses were seen pumping water out of their houses and recovering valuable documents and materials. Although the Dutch have so far escaped the disaster in terms of deaths, these are the aerial visuals that show the scale of disaster in the country. Visuals from Arsen, a neighborhood in the Dutch city of Venlo, which has been flooded by the Meuse River. The mayor of Venlo had uh, assured that the water was not at peak levels anymore, but the situation was still remaining uncertain. In Belgium, residents of a small town of Chaufontaine have come together to clean the streets of debris. The town was ravaged by the floods and it could take months to clear up after the worst floods in modern Belgian history. The narrow valleys of the heavily populated region were swamped in a week of intense rain. Tow trucks were seen pulling away wrecked cars and huge holes have opened under pavements. Now, the Prime Minister of Belgium, Alexander de Croo, visited the flood-stricken Belgian town of Rochefort, and he was accompanied by the European Commission President, Ursula von der Leyen. The army has uh, been sent to four of the country's ten provinces to help with the rescue evacuations, and uh, Prime Minister Alexander de Croo has declared the 20th of July as a national day of mourning for the 27 lives lost to the floods. Water levels have slowly fallen in the worst hit parts of Belgium, but the crisis centre is worried that the situation along the Edema River, close to Brussels, might worsen. About 10 houses near the riverbank are under threat of destruction. In the river valleys of the industrial east in Belgium, the smell of cocoa has mixed up with the stench of the spilled fuel, oil and churned up river mud. Among many of the businesses not temporarily out of action, was the Gala factory, home to one of the country's iconic luxury chocolate brands. But after a week of torrential rains, part of the front wall of the chocolate plant has collapsed. The vats of raw ingredients has been knocked over or burst, and the smell of chocolate has drifted through the air. Floods have brought the historic Belgian chocolate factory to a standstill. A Belgian rail network operator, the Infrabel, has uh, published the plans of uh, repairs to the lines, but some of it will be back in service only at the very end of August. In the southern Belgian provinces of Luxembourg and Namur, the uh, authorities have rushed to supply drinking water to households without any clean supply. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.